Good morning, folks. I reserve the right to change my mind, and I have changed my mind. My initial impressions of the assassination attempt on President Trump was that it was a false flag, and it was an act, and they were doing it to assure that he would be selected, elected to office, that they would rally the public behind Trump by staging this. I stand corrected. I have listened to the audio tape and I pass it on to my former roommate who's got far better ears than I have. And uh, I have heard the tape and I understand this was a triangulated hit again. So this has all the earmarks of a CIA assassination attempt. And who else would be at the top of that thing? everybody. I do not see us being able to administer justice. The treason is so vast, so big. Uh, can it be corrected? Can it be charged? Can it be checked? Can it be charged? No, no. And things are going to be unfolding very quickly at this point. The most dire thing that they're going to do is pull the plug on us, take the electricity away. If they do that, I want you to remember who the targets really, really are. And I'm not going to identify them for you because it's not my job. I'm going to tell you to pray to the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit gives you discernment and it opens your eyes so you can see the evil that's in front of you and dispatch it on the spot. Because that's what you're going to have to do to survive this, if that's what they pull on us. I wish my buddy wasn't right. I wish he wasn't so intelligent. Uh, but, but he helped train me. And my other friend, who's twice as intelligent as I am, she says there were three shooters. I came to that conclusion as well. And the fourth shot, the fourth shooter was the marksman. The police marksman killing the patsy so he couldn't talk. Did he shoot from up there? I don't think so. I think he thought it... It appears as though the young man was totally controlled. I just censored myself. He was totally controlled, and it appears as though his family actually sacrificed him in this. I know you're not going to understand what I'm saying, but you need to understand. It doesn't matter what you or I believe. What matters is they believe this stuff. They believe those wicked gods of theirs. And in case you're wondering who's really running the scene, it's the families of the Roman senators that are behind the scenes that are able to hide like crazy. I believe there are eight of them. And they pretty much own the world. We're not, we're talking trillionaires or maybe even more wealth than that. But there are two spearheads, and that's what throws us off, because when we're busy paying attention to one spearhead, they pull the other one out. And we know that from the fellow that did the analysis, and he started his research in 1911, just like the handgun, 1911. Admiral William Carr. William... Carr was an intelligence Navy officer in His Majesty's Navy, the Canadian Navy. They attempted to recruit him into their plans for world domination. And he, in his analyses, discovered several things. And I didn't agree with everything William Guy Carr said at first. But as time goes on, he's proven to be more correct. And in case you're wondering who I'm talking about, he wrote the book pawns in the game. He is also featured on a couple of YouTube videos that are audio only. Black and white stills, I believe. And the sound quality is adequate. You can hear him speak. And I do think you should do that. And while you're there, you might want to look up Dr. Death himself. And that would be... <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, James Jesus... He hated his middle name. Angleton. 
You look up James Jesus Angleton and we are most fortunate because we've got black and white video of him. And this is the man that was basically behind all of the hits that have happened in the last few decades. He probably has killed more individuals using the uh, hits apparatus of the CIA and the FBI and the Mossad and MI6 and whatever else and the Mafia. He's probably killed more men and women probably killed Marilyn Monroe, for instance, couldn't take the chance, had to silence her. Go look him up, too. You might also get a feel for the guy. Now, my breakfast is starting to cook up. So what I want to tell you is this. The two spears of the sword are world revolution, communism, and Zionism or the Zionist International. And both are creations of the, hmm, the Jews. Uh, let me clarify the atheistic false Jews that worship the synagogue of Satan. And you need to understand these Roman senators are still worshiping their old family gods. They love to make sacrifices, blood sacrifices of human beings. That's how they believe they get their power. So you've got a huge, huge number of people that are on the wrong side. You have all these people that have been waylaid. And I'm even talking about the devout right who's been worshiping Trump. Trump is not to be worshiped. You need to understand he is one of the elite. He is one of the not-so-good guys. He has not been honest about his roots or his religion or any of his stuff. But Kim Clement, a prophet who's passed away in 2015, before Trump was even elected, and I didn't think very highly of Kim Clement. I looked at the guy and I thought, this is a damn seance. He's just chanting in front of this mesmerizing music up on the stage. You know, it reminded me kind of uh, of uh, James Morris of The Doors doing his little soliloquies up there telling, Mother, I want to kill you, or whatever the heck crazy shit that James Morrison would say. But you got to remember, James Morrison was part of the CIA program against this country and they snuffed his ass when they were done with his ass and his father he started the vietnam war for us he was in charge of the incident at the gulf of tonkin that magnificent acting job they did over the radios nobody was shooting at anybody i need you to understand this is a major knockdown drag out fight. This is not overnight. We do not have the apparatus, in a way I'm kind of glad we don't, to take on the deep state and to call them all to trial right now. It would be so massive. And the only way to do it would be if it was military tribunals and they were each assigned military JAG officers. That would keep JAG busy for probably decades, sadly. But I think that's what it's gonna take. If that's what it takes, fine. And there's too many of them to take down to Guantanamo Bay and do them off our land area. So let's do it inside of Washington, D.C. Since it's not ours anyway, we can haul them all into D.C., wall off D.C., and do the trials right there on camera. And then we tell the attorneys that are representing all clients, you're not allowed to make hidden secret deals. And I know that's going to limit them quite a bit. But I don't want any secret deals with secret societies. I don't want any deals with the attorneys capitulate to the crown, the bar, like they always do. I don't want anything like that. So I need you to understand this administration took shots at Trump, made an earnest effort to kill the man. And we're all lucky that he didn't get killed, including them. Because at this point, I'm pretty sure that people would just start killing damn Democrats even. I mean, the killing would start. I don't know where it would stop at. And I don't think that, I think it would be tumultuous enough that our own military couldn't even come back here and sort it out.
you need your militia. You need your local militia. I have been preaching that for a long damn time. Why? Because you don't know what a militia is. Why? Why don't you know what a militia is? Because it was such a ubiquitous part of life back then when we started that nobody assumed it would ever be gone. Nobody could imagine life without having a militia. Nobody could assume life without having the responsibilities to enforce the laws properly. Nobody could imagine that would happen. Yet they've disarmed us. So you think they're trying to take our guns away. No, they had disarmed you in 1902 with the Militia Efficiency Act of 1902, also called the Dick Act, which should be called the Penis Act because they stuck it to us. They suckered us into that saying, oh, they would never take guns away from us. Oh, hold on, hold on, baby. The, you read that Constitution. We don't need to sign no damn Dick Act. You suckered us into it. That needs to go away. That is not constitutional. Just like the FBI, it is not constitutional, it needs to go away. And our CIA, it's not our CIA, it's their CIA. The British own that son of a bitch. They've owned it the whole time. I mean, at least Lyndon LaRouche, commie, cloaked up in fancy clothes and intelligence that he was, at least he's told us the truth, that England was our enemy. That's right, the crown of England has never let us go. Lyndon could have done a better job than what he did, but he was too busy trying to get people to worship him and trying to unite us around his uh, wasting social programs of the public works that weren't even feasible. You know, I mean, he had dreams, all right. It makes you wonder how much dope he was on himself. He wrote about Dope Incorporated, and it makes you... If he was makes you wonder if he was controlled opposition, and I'll bet you when he got out of prison, they told him you're going to be working for us. We're going to put you right back in, man. You had five years, and if we put you back in, we won't be taking you out. So I wouldn't be surprised if he worked for them at the end. Don't be surprised of anything. Your shooters may have been Secret Service coordinator for it, the one who hid it for you, was the head of Secret Service. Why she hasn't been beheaded yet, not beheaded, but you know, why she hasn't been fired yet, I don't know. And Mayorkas, that's incompetence under him. He needs to go right now. He actually, he needs to be in chains. He needs to be put in solitary confinement and debriefed. And then as far as this Biden administration goes, oh my Lord. I mean, we will be putting all of our grand institutions in, in the penitentiary at this rate. So tell me, how do we do that? How do we actually sort this out? How do we get enough control so that we can separate the wheat from the chaff? You better read your Bibles. You better pray to Yahweh. You better dedicate yourself to Yahweh fully and completely. You need to cultivate the Holy Spirit. How many times have I said that? You cultivate it. It takes time. It grows. It's not instant. I don't care what the Bible says about tongues of flames and on the heads of the apostles and all those people there or not. That was a different time and a different place, and it was described the way it was described. Now, I'm not saying it can't happen, and I'm not saying that Paul didn't get struck by, damn near struck by lightning on the road to Damascus. But I will tell you this. Paul's a good example because he went and hid himself up for 17 years. He read the scriptures and disciplined himself 17 years before he showed his face in public. And then he only came out for a little while and went back for a couple of years. Paul had to study. He had to cultivate that Holy Spirit just like we do. We ain't no different and if you think we're you no, know, we're different than you go read Paul's writings, it's pretty screwed up. I wish the guy wrote better English and learned how to punctuate. Of course, they translated his books from the original language, and we're going to argue about that because I think Paul wrote in whatever language he wanted at the moment, and I think Paul didn't write in Greek. I think Paul wrote mostly in Aramaic and in Hebrew and in Greek. I think he wrote in those three languages, depending upon the audience the letter was intended for. 
he was an extremely learned man. He knew what he was doing. Unfortunately, the scribes have sort of screwed things up in the translation and the way they put things down on paper for us. You got to read it and get in the spirit. That's what I have to do, and I struggle with it. It's like for three months, I got to get my mind ready so I can read Paul, Brother Paul, twists up my mind. He's not easy to follow. And the key thing that you need to know is that Paul tells us about living in the spirit today. That's what Paul's best for. Paul said he died to himself. Every day he was putting down his ego. Why? Because he's tuned into the Holy Spirit, wanting to do just like Yahshua, doing only our Father's will. Do our Father's will. Yahweh bless.